So today I wanted to show this graphic um, of a Leonardo da Vinci painting. Uh, this one is from 1490. It's in uh, the Louvre and it's called La Belle Ferronniere. And so this painting is of a young woman who has a distinctive piece of jewelry on her forehead, which apparently was a, a common um, decoration that women wore in that time period. And it was uh, a little, I guess it was an iron um, charm of some kind that was, um, you know, strapped on the forehead. And um, what I did here is in this analysis, as you can see, there's a golden rectangle. And I've anchored it that at the top of the composition and on this shelf, that's a clear uh, horizontal thing going on. And so you could slide it left and right. Mm -hmm. and where I lined it up was with her eyes. And when you when you line it when when you line up these divisions with her eyes, an amazing thing happens, and that is the convergence point of the golden spiral is right on the Ferronier. And so I think what Leonardo was doing here was he designed his whole composition around this geometry, and he was using the Ferronier as the third eye. Is that how wow. you see it too, Jeff? Well, I mean, I'm just loving this one, Scott, to be honest, you know, like the, the critic in me is saying like, are you reaching here with the, with the golden rectangle? But then I'm like, no, I totally give you that because you've just framed the portrait of the person perfectly. So you see the way it lands on the bottom there. I think it's totally fair what you've done. And so for that spiral to end up right there on the third eye um, is, is exceptionally significant in my opinion mm -hmm. but then if there was any doubt left the fact that her two eyes her two regular eyes also correspond to that second square you know um it it's kind of hard to deny that this geometry isn't pointing to the centrality of vision you know both inner and outer vision isn't it? Like, that's the exactly. way I'm reading it. Yeah, exactly. And I think Leonard, in, throughout his work, and I showed this in, in my book on, on his paintings, was that he was fascinated with the golden rectangle. And he would use it over and over again to show yeah. the third eye and the physical eyes. He would point to these. He was very fascinated with vision, I guess. Yeah. And, I mean, what I, what I take from this is that there's two kinds of vision. There's the, the normal vision of looking out into the world with your mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. but there's also the inward looking uh, in that the soul can do through the third mm -hmm. eye. And this, this reminds me of a, of a, a Bible quote that I just Googled. Mm -hmm. And it, it's actually from Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye. If mm -hmm. therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And to cool. me, that speaks of the third eye, you know, yeah, and the light body. Um, you know, yeah. looking out through this mind's eye mm -hmm. um, is kind of a way of of seeing a uh, maybe a deeper kind of reality to things. Um, and Leonardo was such a talented artist in seeing the essence of things. You know, yeah, and, seeing seeing is yeah. is 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 what it's it's speaking of. Can I just say one thing? Right, I'm like. When we look out with our two eyes onto the external world, we obviously receive, you know, stimuli from the external that comes into our sense consciousness, you know, so we experience the trees, the moon, the stars, our friends, whatever. It's all incoming, right? But then I'm thinking the third eye then, right? So the inner eye of consciousness, that must be looking like, you know, there must be incoming that comes into to that eye in a similar way, but maybe that's like from the higher worlds, you know, maybe that's from the invisible dimensions of spirit or whatever. And it's true kind of seeing through that eye that we come into contact with those invisible realms or whatever. And you, know? you know, what this reminds me of is Michelangelo's depiction of the creation of Adam, where Adam's eye is also right on the golden ratio, looking right into yeah. the heart of God, which is also the, the representation of the human brain with the third eye where he's looking. Mm. And so yeah. these, these artists seem to be bringing up the similar theme over and over again. Yeah. And it's remarkable that no, no one, as far as I know, has pointed this out or um, really um, noticed this maybe before that, that, 
these artists were, you know, telling a story that was carefully encrypted in a way in their in their work. Yeah. And I know I've asked you this before, Scott, but do you think that Leonardo um, intentionally and consciously sat down like at a blank canvas and said, OK, I want to really create a piece of work that reflects this point using the golden ratio spiral. I, or I you... believe that that when when I do these geometric overlays, it's so exact that I don't think it was done by feeling. I think it was done by intellect. So I think the way his process must have been was he laid out the golden rectangle first. And, uh -huh. and, then, and then he used his artistic talents to clothe that geometry in the form of a human figure, you know, mm -hmm. lining up with all of that. Because at the end of the day, we perceive that as a beautiful composition because I believe there's something in our visual cortex that analyzes this, the, the geometry and, and, and recognizes that, that it's hitting the golden ratio in these ways. But mm. for one reason or other, we don't become conscious of that. It's kind of a subsystem within our minds. Mm -hmm. but what we get is a feeling of harmony mm -hmm. and, and and beauty that comes out of that and I, I think Leonardo was just so smart that he knew that the golden ratio was kind of the basis of beauty and he used it to structure his compositions yeah wow you know? wow yeah so cool so yeah you'd be feeling it's pure intent like it's explicit he knew what he was doing I, I think he was. I, I think yeah. there's no mistake. He he started with the science of this geometry, and then mm -hmm. he turned it into an art. Yeah. And wow. so when we, when we view it, we're getting a double whammy. You know, we're getting hit with the science and the and the and the art together, and yeah. we don't know why. It's just so beautiful. I mean, he's the most um, popular artist, I guess, of all time. He's his um, his his works are the everybody knows a lot of so many of his he didn't make that many paintings but yeah um you know they're worth they're, they're worth the most money let's say yeah. yeah or probably the most popular or the most famous or, or the most have had the most impact you know yeah but um yeah i mean it's clear as day when you look at those overlays it's like i'm i'm totally on board i'll sign up to but you i know, think Leonardo we, ought to, we ought to use that like aspiring artists today ought to use the golden re rectangle underlying yeah. their work and see what happens you know i'm sure many do i i guess yeah. you know but yeah. it's fascinating you know um there's another um well i we maybe close off on this video now but maybe an, in a future video we could look at some of the work of salvador dali as well you know who's very I, explicit I have, I have a couple of ideas there yeah um, yeah, yeah 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 so we do that too all right uh, so let us know if you like this, um, please. It helps our channel a lot if you like and subscribe, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments.